Mr. Poole, I disagree. I don't think Salon.com is quite as dead as you might suppose. Now, I don't disagree that it's a dumpster fire, crewed by activistic journalists which have chased the algorithm and just generated outrage culture and, you know, helped ensure that the world is just that little bit closer to the abyss. Now, I absolutely agree with you on that, but it doesn't mean that that doesn't have a use to someone. Now, $500,000 isn't a lot, but it is enough to keep it on life support. It's most likely been moved to an LLC, which is going to just keep that IP alive for a bit. There'll be a director, or a couple of directors, rather, in Guernsey or Jersey or somewhere like Delaware or something like that, just holding that company, keeping that IP alive. Now, the reason why I think it might actually rise from the dead, like some sort of zombie, I mean, it, it's just come out, so that, that actually is fairly topical, but yeah, this kind of revenant might rise. And why? Uh, when you look at Jeff Bezos and how he's injecting money into uh, BuzzFeed and the New York Times, and you're going to find this with other tech billionaires, they're going to start trying to ga gather more and more of these mm, publications, both online and offline and mixed media, and they're going to do this to try and control a narrative, to try and ensure that they can maintain their monopolies. And if you have a hundred billion dollars to your name, you can afford to burn money. You can throw money down a woke toilet, which is what I think Salon was and is. And that's going to allow, allow him to just structure it in a little way. Maybe just to create some anarchy, to create some chaos, to balkanise people, to fracture people on the left, on the right, between white, between black, between all kinds of different peoples. Now, that ensures that you can't get people collectivising to ensure that you can actually rein in these companies. Divide and conquer is a very old strategy and it works very well. These companies really do need to be broken up. There is a serious danger to the public square, with Twitter um, constantly, constantly censoring people, mainly on the right with them, Facebook not even allowing certain things to be mentioned, which, <laughs> which is absolutely insane, especially when you can mention them, but you can only mention them in a negative light. So, I mean, and that's about a Texan which talks about interdimensional aliens and portals. So, hardly exactly the worst thing in the universe, considering some of the other dumpster fires and truly evil and insane people which are out there on the internet, still with a forum on Facebook and on these other platforms. They just happen to have, I don't know, an agenda which is slightly more in alignment with some of these people, or at least more useful to them. I think these people are very much uh, focused around uh, a kind of libertarian view but only for themselves. They don't want a level playing field. They want to ensure that the disruptive tech entrepreneurs of the future are kept down, are frozen out, or can be bought up. And they want to ensure that to ensure, basically, their continued monopoly. So I think Vice... Oh, sorry. Not Vice. <laughs> that might be a Freudian slip there. But um, with Salon.com... I think it might be resurrected and weaponised and used against people. Yeah, it'd be used against the same categories of people. Yeah, mainly people like, I suppose, myself. Though, like most people, I'm not quite the target that they often think I am. Um, yeah, it would be weaponised, it would be used against people. And yeah, it would help sort of split people up. And it's cheap at that price. If you've got 100 billion, yeah, you're willing to spend that money to ensure that you can control the narrative or just foment a little bit of chaos to prevent people coalescing around a common objective. Um, so, yeah, I, I disagree with Tim Pool to an extent. I agree with his analysis of why these companies can't make money in an honest way, but it doesn't mean that they can't make money in a dishonest way in the future. So, on that slightly horrifying note, I hope I'm wrong. Anyway, good luck, and as you can tell, I've got a bit of a horrible cold at the moment, so hopefully you can understand me. And I've uh, grabbed myself a, a microphone which I've wired in. Hopefully it's going to give me better sound quality than the uh, webcam I've been using.